Peggy. Haven't seen you for a long time. Hello, Adam. Hi. Hi, Peggy. What you doing? Waiting for my daddy. Is that right? He's been away again? Yes, but he's coming home today. He wrote me a letter and told me so. You been waiting out here long? Since morning. But he'll be along any time now. I bet you before I can count to a hundred. A hundred? You're not gonna do any skipping, are you? No skipping. Not one number. Peggy, we'll see you. We gotta go mend some fences. Bye, bye. So long. Bye, Shortcut home through the Ponderosa. That is, uh, if you land barons don't mind. Well, I don't reckon we land barons mind. Especially today, seeing as how you've got such a welcoming committee waiting for you. <laughs> that ever loving wife of mine. I was talking about Peggy. We passed her place a while back. She's out there waiting for you all by herself. Well, thanks, friend. In that case, I'm glad I took the shortcut. Can't leave my favorite girl waiting. No, sir. I hope he knows what he's doing. Ah, come on, boy. You afraid a little jump? Uh, you can make it. He's dead. 98, Been here long? No, just stop by to say hello. Oh. If you're heading home, I'll walk along with you. Four months, and I still can't adjust. Now you be a very good little girl and go back to sleep. Shut your eyes. And maybe when you wake up...
Hello, Peggy. Peggy. I thought it was Daddy. I thought you were bringing Daddy home. Bringing Daddy home? Is she still waiting for him? She's just a child. What did you tell her about Frank? That he's gone on a long, long trip. Laura, that was four months ago. Well, that's all she's prepared to understand just now. Would you like a cup of coffee? That is, if you're not in too much of a hurry. Oh, not in that much of a hurry. you came by. You're the first person that Peggy and I've seen well, in quite a while. Well, I think that's very good, Laura. I think you ought to get out more. See people. I know, Adam. And I will, before long. As a matter of fact, the reason I came by is having a spring roundup dance Saturday night. So why don't you come? No, I couldn't. Why not? Well, I appreciate you asking me, but... Laura, it'll do you good. Now, why don't you just pick out the gayest dress you've got and come on to the dance, huh? Why not? Well, I, I might, Adam. I just might. Hey, hold on there. What's your hurry? Mother's gonna have a cup of coffee with me. Why don't you get yourself a glass of milk and join us? And we can have a kind of uh, coffee milk tea party. <clears throat> Peggy, I'm glad you came in. I was about to give Adam some coffee. I suggested that uh, she get a glass of milk and join us. And then we could have had a coffee milk tea party. But, uh, she didn't think it was very funny. Well, I think that's a good idea. Peggy, go and get yourself a glass of milk from the kitchen. Still can't get over the way she looked when she come running out there and discovered that I wasn't her father. Laura, I really don't think you're being fair. Really, Adam, she is my daughter. And I do think I know what's best for her. Of course. Sorry. Get out of that chair. Peggy. Get out of it. That's my daddy's chair. Get out, get out. Peggy, what's gotten into you? Don't you ever sit there again. Now you stop it. No. You apologize. No. Peggy, you go to your room. I really don't know what's gotten into her. I think I understand. What about the dance Saturday night? What time shall I pick you? Well, I, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. As long as you don't change your mind. I think it'll do you good.
friend of Mrs. Dayton. Adam Cartwright. One of the Cartwrights. They're important around here? You don't know much about this territory, do you? Well, the Cartwrights, they practically own most of Nevada. Outright. Don't say so. And uh, he's a very good friend of Mrs. Dayton's. Drive me back to town. You said you wanted to visit Mrs. Dayton. I've changed my mind. Mommy. I'm sorry. Please. But I said I'm sorry. Just go to your room. You wouldn't go to a party without Daddy, would you? Well, would you? I told you he's away on a long, long trip. But he is coming back just like you promised, isn't he? Yes. Daddy always keeps his promises. He always did. So we just have to wait, Mommy. We just have to wait. Oh, Peggy was on a long trip. Boy, I don't understand that. He's been... Frank's dead. You know, it's a difficult thing to do. Tell a child that her father's dead. Particularly for someone as, as young as Laura. Well, no, granted she's young, but she's still the child's mother. I remember... When... But I had to tell you that your mother was dead. Hardest thing I ever had to do. I'm not saying it's an easy thing. The longer she waits, the harder it's going to be. It's not doing Peggy any good, and it's not doing her any good. So I think we ought to help him. That's why I think you were right in asking her to come to the party. Yeah, if she comes. It's just a party. I've arranged with Mrs. Walden to stay with you on Saturday night while I'm gone. Peggy, if you don't want me to go to the party, I won't go. You do what you want to, Mommy. Just, uh, don't tell my wife. Huh. Well, uh, I want to stand where I'm standing, Walt. Oh, that's what I call punch with a punch. <laughs> What's in it? Oh, uh, an old cartwright for me. Oh. Seems to me that the Cartwrights have the formula for just about everything. Yeah, seems so. <laughs> I haven't danced in so long, I can't get my 
breath. Hey, what's the matter? Oh, yes. I let go of where it's cool. Nice spot in. Yeah, where's, uh, where's little Joe? Oh, he's, uh, he's in the kitchen helping Hop Singh whip up some more of this punch. What about Adam? Where's he? Well, Adam just went outside with Laura Dayton. Ain't that just like his family? Little Joe out playing with the punch and Adam out playing the moonlight while I do all the work. Now, hold on there, boy. What work have you been doing? Dancing, boy. I've been dancing up a storm. I'm plumb tuggered out. <laughs> have some punch. <laughs> uh, this is much better. Yes, it is. Right here. Right here? Right here is the freshest air on the Ponderosa. Oh, you're right, Adam. It's perfect. And the whole evening has been perfect. Oh, I'm so glad you thought of inviting me. Uh, may I have this dance? I'm glad you decided to come, Laura. For a while there, I thought you were going to change your mind. I almost did. I was afraid Peggy wouldn't understand. Well, there's no reason she shouldn't want you to enjoy yourself. And I am, Adam. I'm having such a wonderful time. Are you? Are you really? Yes, I am. And I'm so grateful to you. I'm so very grateful. Take me home. Home? The party's just begun. I want to go home now. I have a terrible feeling that something's wrong with Peggy. Well, Mrs. Walton is with her, isn't she? Please, Adam. All right, Mom. I'll get my wrap. Be up in a minute and tuck you in. Everything all right? She's fine now. What was wrong? Oh, she had a nightmare. I'm so glad I came home. Well, couldn't Mrs. Walton have handled it? Well, it's not the same thing, Adam. Adam, you just don't understand. You know, that's twice you've said that tonight? Now, just what is it that I don't understand? About Peggy. About uh, how I'm trying not to hurt her. How I'm trying to protect her and shield her from, from pain. Do you really think allowing her to believe that her father is coming back is shielding her from pain? What do you want me to do? Make her forget her father? I just want you to tell her the truth. Well, when she's older. Not now. Laura, I know you love Peggy. Maybe too much. But just because she's a child doesn't mean that you should underestimate her. Children do adjust to the problems of life and death. I know. I had to when I was a child. 
Well, I can't. Why not? Why can't you? Don't. Please, Adam. Please, leave me alone. You know, I understand what's wrong with Peggy. But I don't understand what's wrong with you, Laura. I can't discuss it now. I, I have to go upstairs to Peggy. She needs me. I know that's what I've been trying to tell you all evening. Cartwright. That's right. Can I help you? I think perhaps you can. I was waiting in town to see you, but I decided to come out here. Well, what's on your mind? Frank Dayton and his wife. I understand that you're what they call a very good friend of Mrs. Dayton. Excuse me, I don't quite follow you. Well, just before he died, I loaned Frank Dayton $500. Why are you telling me all this? I don't particularly want to embarrass Mrs. Dayton. And I thought that you, as a good friend, might intercede for me. I see. Why don't you talk to Mrs. Dayton yourself? Would you like me to tell Mrs. Dayton that her husband and I were going away together? That he was sick and tired of her? That all he wanted was to take his daughter with him? Peggy, I think her name is. That's why I loaned him the $500. And he was going to uh, take Peggy away from her mother just like that? I've told you. He didn't think much of her, and she of him, for that matter. Well, how do you know all this? Here's the last letter she wrote him, in which she told him so. Would you like to read it? I'll tell you what, Mr. Cartwright. If you can make arrangements for my loan to be repaid, there's no need for me to tell Mrs. Dayton anything about this. And I'll throw in that letter as a bonus. Right in the town. I'll make the arrangements. Thank you. You're a very understanding gentleman. Where did you get it? From a woman? That's right, and I got it from a woman. Always a woman. He thought so little of me, he even shared my letters with them. Well, she's gone back, and uh, you have the letter. Did you read it? Yes, I did. Oh. I'm sorry, Adam. You've been so kind and tried so much to help. I'd still like to help. I'm afraid it's too late now. You did read the letter, and you know what I wrote. It doesn't matter. Oh, yes, it does. I wrote Frank that I hated him. That, that I, I wished him dead. I wished him dead, and now he is dead. Laura, it was an accident. Frank was drinking. I was there when it happened. But the point is, I wished it to happen. Laura, a child might believe that a wish had something to do with it. But you are not a child. Your feelings are perfectly normal for a woman who has just discovered that her husband has been unfaithful. Just found it out? Oh, no. I've known it all the time. He was always going off more and more. 
Staying longer and longer, drinking, carousing. Well, I waited, and he always came back. But not to me, to Peggy. To Peggy, he was the most wonderful father in the world. And now he's dead. And you had nothing to do with it. It was an accident, and can't you understand that? Night after night, I prayed for his death. I knew he was with some other woman. Now, don't you understand that? I hated him. But now there's no more reason to hate. There is no more reason to feel guilty. Is there? No. I guess not. Well, you don't sound very sure. Is there anything else? No. No, nothing else. I... I understand. And I feel better. All right. Then you've got to help Peggy because she's a part of all of this and you've got to tell her the truth. No, I can't. I... Not right now. I, I'm tired. I'm very tired. Besides, well, she was always her father's child. I could never even really talk to her. Adam, you tell her. No, Laura, it's got to come from you. No, Adam, you've helped me so much. You can help her, too. I'm sorry, Laura. You are the child's mother, and you have to do it. Adam, please. Please. All right. I'll see what I can do. Thanks for the Ponderosa. My mommy isn't home. I know. What's he doing here? Well, it was his idea. He uh, led me here. He seemed to know that uh, there might be a little girl waiting for him. It's been kind of lonely over at our place. Matter of fact, we've uh, been trying to find a new home for him. So if you would uh, be willing to take care of him, he's yours. Are you trying to make friends with me? Sure. And he needs a friend. He's never ridden, so uh, hasn't been very much fun for him. I won't take anything from you. Will you be doing him a favor? I, I think he needs a little girl's attention. You look awful sad. Maybe he thinks you don't want him. You mustn't think that. It's because, well, if I did take him, it wouldn't be because of you. Of course. And I still don't like you, you know. Sure, but uh, one thing has nothing to do with the other. You don't have to worry anymore. I like you very much, and I'm going to take very good care of you. Why don't you take him for a ride? Would you like that? Yeah, he hasn't been ridden very much. He sure misses it. All right. I can do it myself. By myself. Absolutely. A real expert. Now, which way are you headed? Down that way. Funny, I was riding that way myself. Mind if I ride along with you? I don't care if you want to. Come on, go.
bet he could go faster. I bet he can, too. Um, how about a race? All right, where to? Well, you know where Leffert's Pond is? Uh-huh, over that way. Okay, ready? Ready. Let's go. Let me win that race. Oh, you won it fair and square. He is fast. Well, not sure. That's what I was telling you. Well, my daddy be surprised when he sees him. Sure will. Where is your daddy? He's on a trip. He's been gone a long time, hasn't he? It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Now it'll die. No, just go away and come back again next spring. No, they never come back. Well, there's lots of others to take their place. But it won't be the same. You're right, Peggy. You know, it's kind of like that with people, too. Nobody can take my daddy's place. He's coming back. He promised. Now let's go home. That wouldn't be fair. Why isn't it fair? Because you've got to give me a chance to get even. See, you won the last race. Now I'm going to see if I can win this one. All right? All right. But I'll bet you I'll beat you again. Okay. All right, you ready? Let's go! What's the matter, the race over? I don't want to race anymore. You can win if you like. I'd like to go home. All right. Come on, I'll ride along with you. Well, come on. This is the way, isn't it? because you know that your father's dead. What did she say to you? She wouldn't even talk to me. She just ran up to her room. Adam, what happened? Oh, I brought a pony over from the ranch. I thought she'd like to ride him. Well, that was very sweet. But surely that isn't what I've said her. No, no. We were becoming pretty good friends until the ride took us near the cemetery. You showed her Frank's grave? No, she... she ran away. Then you never really got around to tell her. I didn't have to, Laura. She knows that Frank is buried there. Knows? But she couldn't know. That's impossible. Well, she does, Laura. But she ran off because she was scared. She's afraid of the truth. 
She's afraid because she knows that her father is dead and buried there, and because she loves him, and because the only other person she loves won't tell her the truth about him. Well, she doesn't love me. Well, even if that were true, it doesn't make any difference. She still needs you. So you have got to tell her the truth. All right. Tomorrow. No. Not tomorrow. Today. Now. I don't know how to start. Well, start by telling her what's happened. Tell her that her father isn't coming back again. No, if I tell her the truth, she'll take me just like Frank. Oh, yes, he hated me. Right from the beginning. But I, I don't really blame him. Because it was so terrible. What was so terrible? Me. Everything. I was afraid of him right from the first. I was afraid of him from the very first night. And I was afraid of myself. I was afraid that I... that I would do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing or... Or act the wrong way. I was afraid that I might be silly or foolish, or childish. And I cried. And Frank broke down the door. And then he came in laughing, and I was crying. And I, I was calling for my mother. Oh. Can you imagine that? A, a married woman crying for her mother. Well, he kept on laughing. And I was crying. And the more he laughed, the more I hated him. Oh. Oh, yes. I hated him so much. I wished he was dead. I wished he would go out and get killed and never come back. Oh, 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 I hated him. I hated him. Nobody can blame you, Laura feeling like that. You don't understand. I drove him to other women. I made him what he became. It was all my fault. It's mine. So that's where it is. Laura, you couldn't help what you did. But Frank couldn't help what he did either. When two people fall in love and get married, there's no guarantee that it's going to be a, a beautiful and easy life. You and Frank couldn't talk your problem out, so... He drank and went someplace else for comfort, and... You began to hate. You see, if we're lucky enough and... Oh, wise enough, we... We know that sometimes you can love a person for the things they're not as well as for the things they are. But you and, you and Frank couldn't seem to do it. So there's no blame now for either one of you, really. Do you really believe that, honestly and truly? Mm -hmm. Honestly and truly. I was so frightened. So confused and, and so alone. And there's nothing worse in this whole wide world. But you're not alone, you know that. Yes, Adam. I know that. Thank you. You don't love Daddy. You never did. Peggy. You don't want Daddy to come back. I can explain. It's all your fault because he isn't home because he doesn't want to come home to you. Peggy.
Don't you talk to me. I hate you. Listen to me. And I hate you, too. I don't want you. I want my daddy. It's all your fault because he isn't home because he doesn't want to come home to you. It's all your fault, and I hate you. Peggy. Peggy. I have to tell her. Tell you something. Fifty one. He's dead. Fifty two. Fifty three. Peggy, your father's dead. Fifty four. Fifty five. Don't look for him there. He won't come. Fifty six. Fifty seven. He's dead, and he's buried in the cemetery. It's the truth, Peggy. Sixty. Sixty one. I have to tell you because I love you. Sixty three. Peggy, dear. Sixty four. Count, Mommy, count. And he'll come. You'll see. You'll see. Sixty-five. Peggy. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. Sixty-six. Peggy, he's dead. Sixty-nine. Seventy. Stop it. Count, Mommy, count. And he'll come. You'll see. Seventy-two. Peggy. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. No, Mommy. Seventy-nine. Oh, he's dead. He's 80. never coming back. Never. Never. Hey. Stop it. I know, Mommy. Oh. I know. I love you. I love you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> means that you're late getting ready. Come on, Peggy. Adam's here to take us to the picnic. Well, good morning, Peggy. Morning, Adam. That is a beautiful dress. It's new. Well, we better hurry. Come on. We won't be a minute. No, why don't we just do as we planned?
Want some? No, all I want to do is get home. How far did you say that was from Sacramento? When I left, it was 48 miles. I don't figure it's moved in the last five years. It's a cinch you ain't. When you get to that way station tomorrow, you can fork off to Dry Bluff. Shouldn't take you more than a day to get there. Look, Gannon, you got us this far. That's enough. I don't need no more organizing. Hey, come on out of it. You'll be home tomorrow. Yeah, what kind of problem you got? You're gone three lousy years. What can happen to a farm? Yeah, look at me. I had a wife, a store, a good business. Now I lost five years out of my life. Anybody out there? Shot. I ride and he must have been shot too. We better get out of here. Why should we run? We ain't done nothing. Well, maybe not. But you still got the smell of Huntsville prison on you. We all have. It's in that suit of clothes they gave you. When they start asking questions, the finger's gonna end up pointing right here. I've heard that. Once you've served time, they don't let you forget it. Now they're gonna be like that. Not where I come from. Well, you can stay if you want to. I'm getting out of here. Not that I got anything to hide. Yeah, how do we know that? He was out hunting by yourself all afternoon. Well, so were you. And you come back with game. We all did. Yeah, we're all in this together. Well, let's get out of here. We'll keep the horse. That way we'll get a little extra time in case they come looking for it. Well, he's lame. Only thing he's going to do is hold us up. Well, all right. All right, let, it, let him go. But hurry up about it. Come on, Paige, come on. Uh, what in the world is this? Well, I went out looking for some poachers this afternoon. We were worried about him when his horse came limping in with his saddle on. We rode back out to Oak Draw where Joe saw our Paul the last time. Found a campfire there. It looked like two or three men had been around. Found some of Paul's horse tracks there, but we didn't see no sign of our Paul. We should have tried looking for him right away. Joe, you can't track men in the dark. You know that. We'd have just been fumbling around out there. Now, oh, boys, what makes you so sure your pa's dead? Roy, that's my pa's blood on that saddle. He was killed by some stinking lousy poacher. Just a minute. We found this uh, in some ashes around the campfire. Huntsville prison. That's right. Roy, if my pa found men like that, convicts, poachers, they wouldn't think any more about killing him than they would shooting a deer. I believe you're right. Boys, here's what we're going to do. First off, I'm going to wear Huntsville. I'll find out if there's any prisoners that have been released or escaped from there lately. Then I'm going to get a posse. And I'm going to start looking for your pa. I know it ain't going to be easy to get a posse together this time of night. But I'll get some. Believe me that. You boys can wait here. No, Roy, we're not going to do any waiting. We're going back to the campsite. It'll be dawn by the time we get there and we'll just start tracking. Now, you just hold on. That's all right if you want to go looking for him. But if you find him, remember, that's a case for the law. Now, you remember that. Just get your posse together. <laughs> My name's Cartwright. I'd like to ask you a few questions. No, but I don't answer no questions. Yeah, this is important, old man. Look, look, I just mind my relay horses and, and, and mind my own business, and that's all. Now, hey, look, I said we want to talk to you, old man. Now, look, you go fly a fish. I'm not scared of you. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Pete's my name. Pete. We've been riding all night. We're kind of tired. My uh, younger brother here is a little tired and a little touchier than the rest of us, so... What he's trying to say is that we uh, want to buy some information. Oh, well, well that, that, that makes a mighty difference. <laughs> you know, gee, th this must have been my lucky day. You know, you know, early this morning, three other fellas came in here and, and they gave me a dollar too. Other fellas? What fellas? Well, they, they rode in about dawn and, and, and they gave me a dollar to, to fix them up with some coffee and some beans. 
Well, that's what we want to know. Now, was there another man with him, an older man with gray hair? No, no, they were, they were just young fellas, and they were in an awful hurry. How many of them were there? Three. Three young fellas, all hungry and all in a hurry. What'd they look like? Well, I don't know. You see, last week I broke my glasses, so, so I couldn't tell you what they looked like. What else do you know, aside from the fact that they were young? Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was one. Uh, there was one they called Paige. And then there was another fella, and he didn't have a coat. What else? Well, while they were eating their victuals, I took the horses down to the water trough to, to water them. And I noticed there was a, a rifle on one of the saddles, all covered in oil skin. I, uh, I took a look at it, and uh, it sure was a mighty fine rifle. That had a letter C on it. Yeah, yeah, it, it sure did. In silver. Does that mean something? Yes, it does. Now, do you remember which one of them had the gun? No, no. Uh, three men got on three horses and rode away. That's all. Which way? Oh, let me see. They, they went every which way. Give us a straight answer, will you, please? Uh, I gave you a straight answer. They all went in different directions. One fellow went up the mountain towards Kobe. Another one went west and another went south. That's what I meant. Uh, they went every which way. All right. This is where we split up. Look. Look, fella. What have they done? They killed our pa. They killed your pa? Well, if I'd known that, I never would have took nothing from them. Not a cent. Now, which one do you want, Joe? Take the one that went up to Kobe. I'll head south. You're going to kill him? You're going to kill him like they killed your pa? Let's go. Now you're going to be all right, mister. You got Jacob J. Dorman's word on it. Where am I? Right now, you're recovering from two bullet wounds. Now, that one knocked you out long enough for me to get the one out of your shoulder. Yeah, I'm glad you came, too. I was hoping for some company. We still got 20 miles to Carson City. Carson City? Easy. Easy. I was due there the day before yesterday. You cost me almost a whole day. I found you just off the trail. I couldn't leave you to bleed to death, and I was too far behind schedule to take you all the way back to Virginia City. Uh, I gotta get back. Are you, uh... Are you in trouble with the law? No. I gotta get back to my ranch. Just outside of Virginia City. Ponderosa. Oh, the Ponderosa. Yeah, I think I heard of that. Do you think you can get to the wagon? All right, let's just take it easy. Move slowly. Slowly, that's it. Yes. Slowly. Yeah, no, yeah, don't right. rush it. I'm all right. I got right. a friend in Carson City, a very good doctor. It might be smart to stop in and see him. Yeah, it's too far. I gotta get back to, to my ranch, the Ponderosa. I'm, I'm Ben Cartwright. Well, once we get to Carson no, City, I'm sure too, you'll be. It's too far. To... My, my family. My family will be worried. Don't... I gotta get back to them. I don't know. Carson City's always been a big stop for me. Whatever it is up there. Well, I might lose as much as 70 or 80 dollars. Mr. Dorman, why don't you say you might lose as much as 100 dollars even? <laughs> Let's just say that. What's your family going to think? You must have been gone two days now. Say two days? Well, that's right. And I tell you, it's it's been a job tending you. Getting you to swallow water. You must be out of the mines with worry. <laughs> you probably think I'm dead. Well, maybe they're out looking for whoever it is who shot you. Yeah. No, 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 they those boys of mine. They're intelligent men. They're grown men, intelligent. They wouldn't do anything rash. That oldest boy of mine, Adam, oh, he's real calm in an emergency. Real calm. All right, let's try it again. I told you, mister, I don't, I don't know nothing. I just said if there was some money in it, I might be able to get a hold of some of it. Well, I've got a hold of you, and that's all I need. Now, we'll try it once more. He should have come through here sometime yesterday. 
He came from Huntsville Prison. Heavy set fella? 33, maybe? 34? All I know is he's one of three men. His name might be Page, and he might be carrying a rifle with an inlaid stock. How bad do you want to know? In dollars and cents, I mean. Save your money, mister. He can't tell you anything. Is that right? Yeah. Sure. Just trying to pick up a couple extra bucks. Now, if you want to know anything, try me, mister. I get around town pretty good. And there's no charge. My name's Jeannie. Here. Compliments of the house. This man you're looking for. You said he came from Huntsville Prison? I suppose you're here to take him back. No, I won't be taking him back. Oh? Well, I think I know the man. He used to work here. He was in town the other day asking for his old job. Where is he now? They didn't have anything for him. But I slipped him a few dollars and he said he was off for San Francisco. San Francisco, huh? That's right. He left yesterday. Thank you for the information. Well, aren't you going to use it? There's plenty of time I think I'd like to eat first. Well, I have some errands to do. If you're still here, when I get back, maybe you'll buy me a drink. I consider that a pleasure, ma'am. Honey, just look at this yardage, all the way from Kansas City. Oh, you did a much better job of choosing it than I could have. Five years wasn't enough, was it? You in that prison, and me waiting in that saloon. What are you talking about? There's a man in the bar looking for you. You did pull something on the way here, didn't you? Honey, I swear to you. Didn't you? Well, if there was this incident on the trail. It didn't amount to anything. I meant to tell you about it. Why don't you tell me about it? Who are you? What do you want? I tell you, I didn't do anything. Just tell me about it. Well, there were three of us, and we were taking a shortcut across this ranch. The Ponderosa. Yeah, that was it. But we were just passing through. And that night, this horse came wandering into our camp. He had blood on his saddle. We got scared and we ran. Now, look, mister, I don't know what the rest of them did, but I didn't do anything, I swear to you. You knew a man was hurt, and yet you didn't go looking for him, huh? Well, we were scared. We just got out of prison. Now, who was going to believe us? Now, look, I, I know maybe we did the wrong thing running like that, but well, I didn't know who this fellow was riding out there at night. That was my father. He found you poaching. You shot him. You stole his rifle. We traced his horse back to your campfire. No, you can't prove that. You can't prove any of that. You're just trying to shake me down for money. That's what it is, honey. You run on down and get the sheriff. <laughs> You almost did it, didn't you? No, look, 
orchestra. I, I was out of my mind for a minute. Five years in prison. Just the, the chance of going back. Jeannie, tell him I wouldn't do anything like that. I'm not interested in your character references. No, please. I, 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 lo I lost my head. I, I grabbed the gun. Like maybe that was the way it happened that night, huh? No, no. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll wait for you outside. You gotta come out sooner or later. And when you do, bring this with you. Mister! Please. Now, now think for a minute. Look, you think I, I killed your daddy and stole his gun. Now, why would I do a thing like that? What would I gain by it? Look, I, I got everything I want right here. I got a wife. Waited and worked for me for five years. We're starting fresh. Now, why would I want to shoot him? For a gun? It must be a fine thing to be blessed by the Lord with three strong sons. Fine thing indeed. <laughs> three strong lads could be quite a comfort to a man. Yep. Quite a responsibility, too. Uh, could you uh, get your horse to manage a livelier gate? I don't want my sons to worry more than they have to. Get up! I thought you said that oldest boy of yours would be able to handle it, being so smart and all. Oh, he'll, uh, he'll handle it all right. But if father, father worries him, nevertheless, you tend to see in your children only what you hope you'll see, I guess. No, I don't think Adam could do anything without giving it some real deep thought. Any more than horse could do anything without giving it some real deep feeling. Horse? My middle boy. Oh, sir. Strong back, I bet you. But kind of slow. Hmm? Yeah, he's strong. But if by slow you mean slow to anger, slow to condemn, or slow to hurt living things, yeah, I guess you might say he was slow.
in here? Who are you? I'm looking for a man named Page. Some, some folks told me you owned this place. That's right. That's my pa you're talking about. Your pa? Look, has your pa been off on a long trip? Just got back? Yep. Three years he's been away. That's why the farm looks so run down. But me and Paul, we'll have a needle and a pin soon. Yeah. Uh, where's your Paul now? He's working the field. What do you want to know for? You a friend of his? Let's, uh, let's just say I know your Paul. Why do you say so? Where were you stationed with him? Station? Yeah. I bet it was Fort Pierce when he was in the artillery. You're too big to be in the cavalry. He was a map, too, you know. No. No, I didn't know. My pa was away in the army for three years. My uncle read me all his letters, though. So if you was at Fort Pierce with him, I'd know all about you. Yeah, well, maybe he just forgot to mention me or something. No, he wouldn't have. He never forgot nothing. It was a Corporal Jackson of Fort Pierce. Pa said he's pretty fat. Look, ain't you got some place you're supposed to be, boy? Danny. Danny Page. Hoss Cartwright. I don't know. Has Pa ever mentioned that name? Look, I knew your Pa, and that's all there is to it now. Why don't you run along and pester somebody else, huh? Sure. You staying for supper? No. No, I ain't. How come you ain't staying for supper? Look, ain't you got nobody else you can go pester? I told you, my pa's out in the field somewhere. My uncle's in town. My ma's off on a trip. Your mom? When's your mom gonna be back? I don't know. She left a long time ago. Just before Pa went off to the army. I see. I stayed with my uncle while my Pa's in the army. I asked him about it, but he said I wouldn't understand. But I understood all right. You did? Sure. Ma borrowed some money from Pa so she can go on a trip with a friend of hers from town. I think his name was Harry, but I don't remember too good. Anyways, Pa went after him to make sure they got off all right. And then he came back and went into the army. I never exactly figured out why. I guess it must have been to make some more money. Yeah, yeah, I reckon that was it. Hey, I think my Pa's coming. Hello, son. Hi, Pa. A friend of yours in the army come to see you. He says his name is Hoss. Cartwright. Can I help you? Get the boy out of here. What? I said get rid of the boy. What are you talking about? Look, I don't want to hurt the boy. Now get rid of him. Go in the barn, Danny. But, Pa! Go ahead, do like I tell you. Hurry up now. Now, what's all this about? I'm after the man that killed my father. I don't know what you're talking about. What's that got to do with me? Two days ago, you and two other fellows from Huntsville Prison rode across our ranch. My pa caught you poaching and you shot him. You got no proof of that. I got all the proof I need. Now you're gonna pay for it. But please, mister, I, I ain't never killed nobody. Sure you ain't. 
That's the reason you spent three years in the penitentiary, ain't it? Because you ain't killed nobody. You killed your wife, didn't you? You don't understand. She deserved to die. You decided that, didn't you? Just like you decided that my pa deserved to die. No. I spent my time for that. I ain't never gonna kill again. Is that why you carry that gun? Man fresh out of prison, why he... You know, he's, he's gotta be careful. People blame him for things. Yeah, that's right. Just like I'm doing right now. You better get ready to use that gun. Now, now you saw my son. He's been waiting three years for me. What's he gonna do without a paw? I don't know. I ain't got used to the idea myself yet. Now you get ready. just wasn't any other explanation. What with you missing and the horse coming back and the blood and all? Me and the posse just scoured about every foot of that entire section looking for you. All right, Roy. Now, where are the boys? Helps out the coffee, Mr. Dolan. Well, ben, they figured that you was dry gulch, that you was dead, and they went after the three fellas that they figured that was responsible for... Ben, I just never seen them boys like that. When they leave... It was the night before last. I just got this telegram here from Huntsville Prison, gave me the names of the three men that had been released. Now I wired the sheriff's closest to them, hoping that they'd get there in time. Well, you know my boys better than that. Yeah, I do. And I also know that they figured that their father had been murdered. Here, take this coffee. I'm going over and get the doc. Be good for you. I don't know. If it was me, I'd feel pretty good knowing I had three boys ready to kill anyone who did me in. No. Oh. Oh. They've been taught the exact opposite. Then why are you worried? I don't know. Why does any father worry? It's like when you plant seeds blind. You don't know whether they're going to grow and keep growing long after you pass. Knowing and gone. Well, from what you tell me about your two oldest boys, it don't seem likely they're too apt to go against what they've been taught. You uh, didn't tell me much about your third boy. I don't know how much I know about that third boy of mine. He's quick-tempered. Sometimes I, I see an anger in him that Three wives, three sons, all of them so different. So you got doubts about what he'll do? No. No, I guess I... I got doubts about me. But whether I was able to make him understand. I'm looking for a man. Would have ridden in the last few days from the south. Come on, all I want is an answer to my question. I couldn't tell you, mister. Look, uh, probably be without a jacket. Might be carrying a fancy rifle with a silver C on the stock. Does that help any? I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you when to leave. Leave him alone. He can't help you. <clears throat> All right, then maybe you can help me, mister. For heaven's sakes, none of us can help you, I tell you. Take what you want, but leave us in peace.
Everybody's here like you asked, mister. Bartender, give me a pen and a piece of paper. Now, look, we've been here all afternoon. Nobody's gonna tell you nothing. My name's Joseph Cartwright. I'm writing a promissory note in the amount of $5,000. This note will be good in any bank in Virginia City. You all know the information that I'm after. The man who gives me that information will receive this money. All right, here it is. $5,000. Now, one of you is going to tell me what I want to know. You all know that. And when he does, he gets this. Every single penny of it. Just don't wait too long. I'll be outside. <laughs> Is that him? That's the man, Colonel. We told him nothing, Colonel. He even tried to bribe us, but Take we him told out. him nothing, Colonel. I'm Colonel Abel Chapin. These are Chapin men, and that's Chapin dirt you're eating. Who are you, and what do you want? I've been looking for him. What do you want with him? I want to kill him. You know him? Don't lie to me, Billy. I swear to you, Pa, I never seen him. All right. What do you claim he did? He killed my father. That's my father's rifle he's got with him. It's like I told you, Pa, I bought this from one of them fellas I come back with. What call I got to steal a rifle? I don't know, Billy. I stopped trying to give reasons for the things you've done a long time ago. Pa, I swear to God. If you're lying, don't make it worse by blaspheming. I'm gonna let you go. Pa. Shut up. I'm letting you go, but come back here and you're a dead man. Come, Don, you look around. As far as your eye can see, I'm the law. Judge, jury, and hangman. Remember that. And consider yourself lucky. Take him off the ranch and turn him loose. You're no better than to bring his lies back here again. Mr. Paul, you, uh, you give me a chance at him. I'll make sure you don't ever come back. No, stay away from him. You're protected here. Alone away from the ranch, you wouldn't have a chance against a man like that. You wouldn't even understand him. Let him go. 
Mm. All right, I'll handle it now. You're going back to the ranch. But the colonel said to let I him... said get out! Anything should happen to him. Ain't nothing gonna happen to him unless he tries to escape. Now get out! Go on, move. You hear this Billy Chapin talking? Now move! I'm going to do what my pa's afraid to do. He's here. He's gonna be all right. Hey, Paul. Paul, dog, gone. I thought you was gone for sure. No. no. What happened? Oh, some fella took a couple of shots at me. Couldn't see who it was, though. A fella? You mean there's only one of them? Yeah, just the one fella. Just the one. Mr. Mr. Dorman here, he found me lying on the trail. Picked me up and took me along with him, and before I come to, I was on my way to Carson City. How are you, sir? Uh, your brother just told us what happened to him. How about you? I found my man. But I couldn't go through with it. What he said to me made sense. I couldn't get it out of my mind. Couldn't do it. What'd you do with him? I left him with the sheriff there, uh, holding him for an investigation. Well, pretty generally the same thing happened to me, Paul. I found my man. He had a, he had a little son, a cute little fella. I just didn't have the stomach to go through with it. I don't reckon that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, you know, it it makes, uh, makes a lot of sense, son. In my business, a man can count himself lucky if he's two-thirds successful. Little Joe ain't back. Uh, you boys have been riding quite a bit, won't you? Why don't you get up to bed and rest up? Well, uh, Doc said you ought to get some sleep, too, you know, and, uh, don't worry about Joe. Ah, uh, he's hot-tempered, but... He's still one of your sons, Paul. Why don't we all go to bed? Even if Joe did find his man, and he did kill him, he did it believing that that man had killed you. An eye for an eye. Is that what you boys have been taught to believe? Not what I'm trying.
trying to say. I know what you're trying to say, Adam, and I, I thank you for it. This is not something that little Joe has to think out. He either believes it in his heart or... Hey. I heard something. You've been hearing something all night. No, but this is for real. Tell me you are right. I was afraid to believe it. How do you feel? I'm a fine boy. Fine. See, you got Paul's rifle. So you found your man. Yeah, I found him. Nobody deserved killing like he did, but I couldn't do it. Did your rifle point at him? I had my finger on the trigger, but I just couldn't pull it. Maybe it was because it was your rifle. Took him to his father. He confessed. Sheriff Coffey's gonna go out and pick him up sometime tomorrow. You, you look tired. I haven't paid you what I owe you. I, uh, kind of lied to you about Carson City. Never was much of a stop for me. Never done more than four dollars worth of business there in my life. Even so, Mr. Dorman, I, I feel I owe you a great deal. I've been paid. I hope you'll... Come by to visit next time you pass this way. I'll make a point of it. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. It doesn't make sense, Hoss. Look, if he was as little as you say he was, now how could he go around lugging a strong box full of gold? This thing is a load for any one of us. Uh, let's look at it this way. If there is a little man running if, around... If, 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 Paul, if is all I've been hearing. There ain't no if to it, Paul. I've seen him with my own two eyeballs. A little man no bigger than that. I've seen him. Right. A little man in a green suit that buried a strong box full of gold dust. And then skips away into the bushes, where with a merry twinkle in his eye, he thumbs his nose and flies away to the rainbow. I've had all I'm going to take out of you, Adam. Paul, how come nobody will believe me? I'm just telling you exactly what I've seen, and if it sounds sort of crazy or something, well, it ain't my fault. <laughs> of course it is. Look, what he says must make some sense, because there it is. It's a strong box. It's real. It contains thousands of dollars worth of gold. Must have come from somewhere. Right. Yeah, and I'm 
imagine somebody's pretty anxious to get it back. Well, we can stand around here talking about it all night. Tell you what, tomorrow morning we'll ride in and see Sheriff Coffee and, and uh, tell him the whole story. Maybe he can help us. You're not going to let him tell that story in town. Oh, no, Papa, you can't do that. They're going to laugh at us. They're going to think he's loony. But we're going to try to get to the bottom of this. Now, Hoss will tell Sheriff Coffee the whole thing exactly the way he saw it. This time. Boy, I gotta catch him, little rascal. Of course you'll catch him. You'll catch him. Uh, well, we could if we'd hurry. But, all right, uh, just calm down. Uh, Adam, little Joe, go uh, go outside and look around. Uh, what, what are we gonna look around for, Pa? Uh, I gotta have something to look around. You heard what he said. We look for little green men riding on hound dogs. Now, I'll go out and check around the house, and uh, you look for a butterfly net just in case. Right. Butterfly net. What? Oh, oh you got a good lump coming up here. Come on. Better get something to put on it. Hey, Paul, look. Somebody broke into the bookcase. Strong box, it's gone. That's what I was afraid they'd do. Hey, who? The little green men, Paul, the little green men. Now what am I going to tell the sheriff? The only part of my story you believe in the first place is the part about the gold, and only then because I had that box to prove it. Now what am I going to tell him? Well, you, you, uh, you 
tell him to, to, to tell him the truth. And you say that Adam and little Joe couldn't find a trail, huh? Well, it was, uh, of course, it was dark, and uh, they had a pretty good head start on the boys. Look, Roy. See, these little fellers, they, uh, they got a way about themselves. They uh, just disappearing in thin air. Well, now, maybe them little fellers, little horses, was flying horses, and that's why you couldn't find it. Now, look, Roy, we came here to report a robbery. If you're not going to take it serious, we'll go home. That's all. Hold on. If anybody but Ben Cartwright come in here with a story like that wide, what do you want me to do, Ben? The gold. Just see that it's recovered, that's all. Look, religiously, I go through everything that comes into this office. And there's been no bank robberies, no stagecoach holdups, no gold shipments missing anywhere. So why in the dickens should I go out there hunting for something that ain't even been reported missing? But, Roy, that's just the point. We're reporting it missing. Well, you can't claim something stolen that don't even belong to you. Well, well wait a minute, Roy. Somebody broke into my house. Somebody broke into my bookcase. Now, surely that's enough for you to go on. Right. I'm just not going to close up this office and go out there looking for a gang of little... Now, what would the folks of this town think if I was to try to organize a posse for the purpose of tracking down a bunch of little men with green suits? Why, they'd hog-tie me and lock me up in my own jail cell till election time. Well, gentlemen, I got places to go. I got to meet the stagecoach. He didn't believe a word of it, did he? Uh, well, it's, it's not a question of believing, son. It's... Uh... Don't make no never mind, Paul. If somebody came to me with a story like that, I'd be at least interested in it enough to look into it. Yeah. Well, listen, while, while I'm in town, I think I'd, I'd better go and pay that grain bill. I think I'll go to the saloon and get me a beer. Yeah, that's a very good idea. And I'll pick you up there as soon as I'm ready to go. Charlie, stage on time today? Ahead of time. Done come and win. Yeah? Anybody get off? There's just one fella. You looking for somebody in particular, Roy? No, I was just keeping tabs on the goings and comings. Where'd this fella go? Yonder to saloon. Yeah, much obliged. Well, like I said before, he's right down the street. Mm -hmm. You saved yourself a trip. Here he is now. Oh! oh well, well, hello. Pleasure to meet you, sir. McCarthy is the name. Professor James Aloysius McCarthy. Uh, <clears throat> I uh, assume that you are the bulwark of local law enforcement? I'm the sheriff, if that's what you're talking about. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I think perhaps maybe you can help me. I was, um, I was wondering if you'd noticed any, uh, strangers passing through this fair city of yours of late. No, there hasn't been a stranger in this town month of Sundays. Oh. Unless, of course, they was little men with green suits. Little men in green suits? How about that, horse? More like little thieves in green suits. Hoss here claims that they run off with a strong box full of gold. Gold? Oh, Hoss, did you fellas make a strike? Oh. Hold on now, you fellas. You had this whole town in a stampede. I didn't say nothing about a gold strike. I was just repeating a crazy yarn of horses. It wasn't no crazy yarn, Roy. Little man in green suits? Hoss, you must have got a hold of some bad whiskey. <laughs> Boy, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> just a minute, gentlemen. Now, please, now, please. I, uh, I, uh, it's a very charming story, and I'd like to hear a little bit more about it, if I may. Why don't we uh, all refresh ourselves while we talk about it? Uh, <laughs> the drinks are on me, gentlemen. Hey. Uh, won't you step up here, sir? Uh, Barton, a couple of drinks here, please. Hoss ought to give an eye to to see out there fumbling around after them little green men you dreamed of. That bird at Roy, I didn't dream them up, I seen them. Ah! Of course you're not, Jack, please, please. What's the matter? In my country, it's very bad luck to laugh at the little people. What, uh, where do you come from? Ireland. Oh, excuse me, uh, Professor McCarthy, this is Horse Cartwright. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, it's a great pleasure and an honor to meet such a fortunate man. Yeah? 
Only once in a lifetime, and maybe not even then, is a man privileged to meet another man who has actually seen a leprechaun. A what? Oh, yes, well, of course, you wouldn't know about those, would you? Well, uh, they're a darling little bunch of rascals, all dressed in their green suits. But are you sure these little fellows I see are... Leprechauns? Of course I am. Everything fits. Now, <clears throat> it's a very well-known fact that every colony of leprechauns has a buried treasure of gold. But to a leprechaun, freedom is much more precious than all the gold in the world. That's why if you had caught one, he would have bought his release just like that by giving you all of his gold. I ain't for sure I understand exactly what you're trying to tell oh, me. Oh, it's quite simple. Had you actually caught one of these little fellows, he would have given you all of his gold and it would have been yours to keep. But since you didn't, well, it was perfectly all right for him to come after you and reclaim his treasure. Well, I never heard anything like that. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a very commonplace thing in Ireland. It happens all the time. Although I must say this is the very first instance I've ever heard of it happening in this country. Oh, this fellow's pulling our legs. Wouldn't be too sure of that, Roy. You thought I was, but I seen him. Of course you did. And had you caught one of them, it is a far richer man you'd be today. Yeah, that was quite a pile of gold at that. <clears throat> uh, Hoss, uh, you figure them little fellas still running around loose out there? Uh, I reckon so. I reckon there's any way of knowing. Hey, where are you going? I think I know where he's going. <laughs> Senses? Want me to run them out, Ben? You got a legal right to run them off your land. Oh, no, no, that just caused hard feelings. Oh, let them go. Maybe when they've worn themselves out, they'll come to their senses and see how foolish this whole thing is. Or they'd find one of those leprechauns and prove to you I ain't been lying. Oh, so many times do I have to tell you? There's no such thing as a leprechaun. They ain't gonna find any leprechauns. A leprechaun is a mythical creature, like in a storybook, like pixies and elves. What? Excuse me, Mr. Cartwright, but if those weren't leprechauns your son saw strolling around, exactly what were they? Well, now, I don't know what they were. But if there are a lot of little men running around there, the more hunters we have looking for them, the quicker we'll find them. And the sooner we get this cleared up, the better for all of us. Right. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I suppose you won't mind if I take a little look around myself, will you? No, no, I'll talk, Professor. Look around all you want to. Thank you. I believe I'll poke around a little, too, if it's all right with you, Ben. Why not? Good hunting. Oh, what about me? I'd sort of... Now, look, horse. Maybe them people down there have all that time to waste. Looking for gold. But we got work to do, so let's go back and do it. Paul, wait. It ain't the gold. It's, it's some little men, Paul. I, I gotta find them if they're down there. I got to prove to you and them other people that I ain't lying. And to prove to myself I ain't crazy. Paul, it's very important to me. All right, horse. Get it out of your system. But on one condition, after all this is over, and you don't find anybody, we won't ever mention it again. Ever. Right? Right. Yeah. I 
Careful, Carl. Careful, Carl. Ah. Oh, shoot, dang near scared the dickens out of me. Charlie, look, if you go to catch one of them little buggers, you're gonna have to pay more attention to what you're doing and quit running around so dang much. Upstairs, running back, Charlie! Charlie! Charlie. That's Roy and the professor. What are you trying to do with that thing? You're gonna hurt somebody with that. Excuse me, Sheriff. I, I reckon I'm a mite jumpy with all the excitement. Well, now, tell me, has anyone seen anything yet? Nary a sign. Most of them done give up and went home. And they're a mite peeved at you, Hoss. They figure that you made up the whole story all along. Well, I, I tell you what, gentlemen. Why don't we give it up for the day? I'm so tired I can't stir another step. Well, there's, there's still about an hour of sunshine left. I reckon I'll stick with it a while. Now, y'all, Hoss, if you see anything... Ooh. Ooh. I got me one, Charlie. I got me one. You lop ear jackass, it's me that you got. <laughs> well, I better be getting back to town. You want to come with me, Professor? Do I? Of course I want to come with you. Come on. Come on, Oz. No, thank you, Roy. I think I'll moosey around out here for a spell more. Ain't nobody searched out that little creek bottom yet. <laughs> you know, I feel kind of guilty tromping around out here. Sure hope it's peaceful back in town. Oh, now, don't you worry, Sheriff. After all, you were only doing your duty, weren't you? Seeing to that the mom didn't get out of hand, that, that things were kept orderly, hmm? You've got the greatest talent for explaining things. It makes them come out sounding just right. <laughs> well, it's all in the way a man looks at things, I always say. Hmm? Yeah, I reckon so. <laughs> See something? Yeah, no, I, I just thought I did. Uh, just a rabbit, perhaps. Uh, I, um, <clears throat> just thinking, though, you know, it um, seems uh, such a shame, you know, such a terrible pity for me to be going off and leaving poor Mr. Hoss here, when, after all, it was myself here that instigated this hunt. No, I, I, I think I'd better stay here with him, because if I don't, my conscience will never give me one moment's rest. Oh, well, you suit yourself about that, but I better be getting back. You sure you can find your way? Oh, of course, of course. Look, we McCarthy's were born with an uncanny sense of direction. I'll see you in town then. To be sure, to be sure. Now, lads, you can come out. Well, come on out. I know you're here. Come on out, lads. You've led me in a merry chase up to now. You're old friend, but it's all over, so come on out. Good work, men. Michael, you and Bobby go get the wagon and meet us at the camp. Sean, you find a good tall tree and keep a lookout. Otto, you help me tie him up. That's well, the first time I ever knew Hoss to miss a meal. Yeah. Should have been home by now. You want me to go out and take a look for him? That's a good idea. This, uh, Professor McCarthy, just what is he a professor of? Adam, I don't know the slightest thing about him. But I have a strong suspicion that he's tied up with this whole thing in some way.
Don't you run away. Oh, I won't. Pa sent me to bring you home to supper. Damn, burn it. Dad, burn your on me. Hide, little brother. Wait till I get my hand. I Hey, Joe, you see him, don't you? You see him, don't you, Joe? Yeah. Wait, let him see him. I can't wait to see him spicing on his face. We got him, we got him! Hey, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. You ain't got him yet. He's on those little branches out there. They're not gonna hold our kind of weight. Yeah, yeah. How are we gonna get him down? Hey! I'll shake free. Hey, I'll no, 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 don't, don't do that. You're gonna kill him. Look how little he is. Hey, hey, up there. You, uh, you savvy English? Woo-hoo-ee. I don't reckon he does. I don't understand how that leprechaun, neither. How are we gonna get him down? I don't know. Listen, I'm gonna go get Pa and Adam, and I'll bring him here. You keep an eye on him. Good idea. Hurry, right. hurry, hurry. Hey, now, keep, keep an eye on him. Don't let him out of your sight. Uh-huh. Hey, do you keep one? <laughs> yeah, I think you'd look at him. <laughs> I told you then, I told you. I think I have a systematic schedule here that'll uh, let us replace the whole 56 miles of fence over the next few years without having to... Uh... Well, what's wrong? Look, you go out and saddle a couple of horses and I'll, I'll fill some lanterns and I'll just feel better going out looking for those two. I know, horse. I think you're right. Hey, Paul! We got one up a tree. One of those little men. One of those little men. Now, I know what you think, but I saw him with my own eyes out of my son. Horses got him back up there and he's keeping them for us. Now, come on. <laughs> Be good. All right, Adam. See for yourself. See what? It's coming out of the trees, out of the bushes, up out of the ground. Easy, I never fall. This easy. place is crawling with them little green men. It's coming at me from up, down, sideways, everywhere, Paul. You ain't never seen nothing like it. I, I, I saw one of them, Pa. Where's Professor McCarthy? Oh, uh, he rode back to town with Roy Coffey. Well, he uh, couldn't have. We just saw his horse tied up down there.
There's something mighty funny going on around here. I knew it would come to him sooner or later. You just have to give him time, you know? Will you two fellas go and see if you can find the professor? Hey, professor! McCarthy! Professor! Professor! Hey, Joe! Pa! Boss! Come on here, I got something! Hey, ain't that the professor's hat and cane? Man, it couldn't be our horses. We left them tied back there. Sounds like it came from that draw over there. Maybe we can surprise whoever's in there. Pin him in. I don't think that'll be necessary, gentlemen. I'll take over from here. Ah, Timothy, how are you? Hello, McCarthy. Oh, you can't explain what this is about? Why, I'd be delighted to. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you McCarthy's leprechauns. They sing, they dance, and as you've seen, they're daring and accomplished acrobats. They have performed before all the crowned heads of Europe. They are the toast of two continents. Your performers? You're in a show? Oh, and I, uh, I must apologize for the lads' behavior just a few minutes ago. They were, uh, well, a little annoyed because they thought that uh, you were going to steal their gold again. Now, just a dang minute. Now, just a minute, just a minute now. What, what, what was the point of filling everybody's heads with all those wild stories about, about leprechauns and, 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 and buried treasure? I was merely trying to help the lads. After all, I didn't know that they'd come by the gold legally. The last time I had seen them was in Kansas, where our show was disbanded because of uh, financial difficulties. Yeah, and you cheated us out of all our savings, the money we were going to buy the farm with. And our families are still back east waiting for us to send for them. That's why we began panning for gold. We were broke. Oh, now, come on, Timothy. After all, everything has turned out fine, hasn't it? And with the gold from our little... <laughs> Your little enterprise here... 
We can fashion the most magnificent show this world has ever seen. And think of it, lads. Just think of it. You're going to be the stars. Now, hold on there, McCarthy. There's something I think you ought to know. You're on Ponderosa land. <laughs> I don't think I quite understand. Well, let me explain. You see, the gold that your little friends here have been panning, they panned on our land. So the gold isn't theirs or yours. We didn't know that. Honest, we didn't. We thought it was open land. Hmm. Well, now this, uh, it's a different, different complexion of things altogether. Yes, yeah, so well, we'll have to attack this problem from another angle, I can see. Gentlemen. All right, now, lads. Since we've got the gold, let's be off. No, McCarthy. We won't steal for you. The gold belongs to these people, not us. Come on now, Timothy. After all, you've only got one of two choices. A simple little bit of larceny or bloodshed. And I imagine that uh, you'll choose the former, eh? Good. I thought you'd see it my way. Gentlemen, would you uh, step over here, please? Good, thank you. Thank you for your hospitality, gentlemen. Thank you. Now it is with a great deal of sorrow that I bid you... I'm sorry, McCarthy. Don't be too hard on him, mister. Bring him along. Well, Mr. McCarthy, you can thank the Cartwrights here for not bringing charges again, yeah? And once you're on that stagecoach, I want that to be the last time the Virginia City ever sees you. <laughs> the old refrain, eh, lads? Ah, uh, Mr. Haas, I understand congratulations are in order, huh? All the gold goes to you, I'm told. As the old saying has it, them that has gets. Well, I'm afraid not this time, Mr. McCarthy. We figured on giving the gold back to these fellas. You what? Yeah, we, we figured that they got more of a right to it than we have. Well, I'd like to hear how you decided that. Well... Roy, where'd that gold come from in the first place? Up in the high mountains, right? Now, they ain't on the Ponderosa. I figure if these fellers hadn't have panned that gold out, it'd have gone right on out to sea and nobody would have benefited from it. But they were standing on your land while they was doing the panning. That don't make no difference, Roy. That gold never did belong to the Ponderosa in the first place. I figure it was just sort of passing through. Hmm, what a charming idea. Hoss, uh, by all legal rights... Roy, I think what Hoss is trying to say is that Regardless of who has a right to the gold, he feels that the gold should go to where there's the most need for it. And this way, that gold will help five new families get started on a new life. Oh, I, I don't know what to say. The only thing I wanted to do in the first place was just prove that I didn't dream you little fellers up. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, I uh, <clears throat> don't suppose that uh, you gentlemen would like to come along with me, eh? No, Professor, I'm sorry. We just don't want to be performers. No, I didn't suppose you would. <laughs> we just don't like being laughed at all the time. Laughed at? Well, now, listen to me, lads, listen. None of us in the show ever laughed at you. But those people, those people outside there, they'll laugh at you. Oh, it's a very beautiful dream you have, settling down with your loved ones, farming your own land, leading normal lives. The only question is... Will they let you? Stagecoach is here, Mr. McCarthy. Let's go. All right. All right, folks. Excuse me, please. There they are. What are they? They're the funniest little critters I ever did see. <laughs> well, 
Maybe the professor's right. Maybe we shouldn't try to live out among other people. Maybe we just don't belong. Now, wait a minute. Just hold your horses a minute. Don't you go selling those folks short out there. Don't you see? You're making the same mistake they're making. You're judging them before you even know them. Now, come on. You're going to go out there and meet these folks right now. Come on. Folks, I'd like for all of you to move down here. i got something I want to say to you. Concerns every one of you. I want you to hear it. Hold on. Folks, I know that because all of you turned out and are raising such a ruckus over our newcomers, that you're just chomping at the bits to meet them, ain't you? Hey, Hoss, be careful you don't step on one of them little fellers. You might squash him. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, you be careful you don't get stepped on a little bit. <laughs> now, folks, I know that none of you would purposely or mean to hurt anybody's feelings. But Timothy here and the others feel like that they ain't welcome here. They think you're making fun of them because you don't want them around. Uh, of course, you noticed that they're different from you. They, they're a whole lot littler. Well, there's a funny thing. You see, I, I noticed the same thing about you. <laughs> Now, these, these fellows are here for the same reason most of us are. That's to help settle our town, make it grow. Raise their families, they're planning on building their homes here, working their crops, being good neighbors. Now, in the past, we've always welcomed folks like that. And I don't see no reason we should treat these fellows any different. You, Mr. Lucas, you're the banker. You ought to be happy to see new investors in the town. Their money is just as big as mine. And you, Daryl Glisby, it ought to tickle you to death to find prospective buyers for that bottom land you've been trying to sell. And that ain't all. They're going to need tools to work that land with and to build their homes. We got five brand new families here in Virginia City. It's going to raise their young'uns. They're going to buy clothes and buy food and get haircuts and get their teeth fixed, buying seeds and supporting the church. I figure every one of us is going to benefit from their being here. I think we ought to give them a great big rousing Virginia City welcome. Shucks, huh? We wasn't making any more fun of them than we do of you for being so big. <laughs> Dorsal's right, Hoss. I reckon they're as welcome here as any of us. Probably more welcome than some of us. <laughs> Must be something in the air. Yep. Some real nice. Oh. Hey, hey, fellas, wait, no, wait a minute, fellas. There ain't enough of us, Haas. Come along on your own power.
fella brought this up from the railroad for you. Oh, can I get you something to drink, Mr. Cartwright? Oh, no, thank you. Well, isn't this fine? Railroad's added some extra crews, and now they want 200 of those big parlings by Monday. And 50 a day from then on. Oh, the 50, I can guarantee you, but 200 by Monday? You ain't got the crew or the teams to do it with. Well, I'll see if I can get some extra men from the mines, and I'll get some teams in town. Oh, by the way, Adam, I noticed some of your trimmers nipping at the bottle on the job. I want you to put a stop to that before some of them find themselves without hands and feet. Well, I've done the best I can. If a man wants to drink, that's his business. I can't be every place at once. The man in charge of a crew is responsible for everything connected with it. We've got a rough schedule. I want results. Well, now we've really got a rough schedule ahead of us. I know you boys are tired already. We sure are that. Yeah, you know you'd like to have a few days rest. Hey, gee, thanks, Pa. That's all right. You're, uh, you got it coming to you. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, well, like I said, you got it coming to you after the job is done. Colors the sky, Mr. Cartwright. Hmm? I said, uh, what color is the sky? Blue. You didn't look up when you said it. You just guessed. How long has it been since you looked up? You better get it back to sharpening those blades, Gabe. We'll need them all in the morning. Yeah, they'll be ready when they need them. You ever hear of the fellow who couldn't see the forest for the trees? got himself so lost, he never did get out. Now, if he had taken it kind of slow and easy and kept his head up instead of down, he might have got a glimpse of the sun, or he might have followed the wild geese into the clear instead of working himself to a rattle like you're doing. I'm doing all right, Dave. I like the way you get things done, Mr. Cartwright, but a man's got to ease up once in a while. You know, just to uh, stop. Take time to give thanks for the blessing of just being alive. If he don't, he's liable to have an epitaph on his tombstone that reads, Here lies a man who let the joy of living wait. He waited too long. Now it's too late. Well, thanks for the warning, Gabe. I've always worked pretty hard, and I guess I always will. Grandpa! Grandpa! Hello, son. Martha, come on. Let me help you down here. There. This is my uh, grandson, Mr. Cartwright. Jody, say uh, howdy to Mr. Cartwright. Howdy, Mr. Cartwright. Howdy, Jody. Uh, this is my daughter, Martha. Married name is Fletcher. Miss Fletcher? Got a fine-looking boy here. Thank you very much. I didn't think you'd mind Martha driving him over here once in a while to visit with his grandpa. Oh, well, no, just as long as he keeps out of harm's way. Oh, he'll take care of himself, all right. He learned his lesson when he saw his Paul kill himself trying to break a spooky horse. And uh, terrible loss to all of us. Yeah, well, uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you show Jody the flume, Gabe? Sure, I'll do that. Come on, Jody. Hey, did I ever tell you the time I went around the corner and the corner? I hear about your husband, Mr. Fletcher. You know, Gabe and I don't think alike about too many things. I'm awfully glad that your boy has such a fine man as his grandfather to look up to and love. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Cartwright. I... You bring your boy around any time you want him. Perfectly welcome. Thank you. Ben, I ain't got an extra team. Now, look, you had plenty last week. 
What am I supposed to do? Feed them hay burners waiting for you to need more horses? No, sir, I got an offer. I rented them. Well, then get them back. Oh, come on, Ben. Well, I'll get them back. Who's got them? Barney Fuller. I don't know. His money's as good as anybody's. Now, why don't you speak to him? Make a deal. That'll be the day. See you around, Ben. In case you didn't hear me, I said, that'll be the day. I don't know what you mean, Ben. Look, Barney, if you come here to gloat, I haven't got the time. Oh, on the contrary. My spies tell me the railroad's got the ties laid within a couple of miles of the trestle. But the men are sitting around idle, waiting for the pilings. I just hope you don't have to pay an expensive penalty because you had a little hard luck with your delivery. You'd love it. Oh, no. What I'm trying to say is, if it'll be of any help, I can let you have a little of my own timber. Now, you listen to me, Barney, and you listen good. I wouldn't take one softwood sapling out of your stand. Now, that truss is going to be built, but it's going to be built with ponderosa lumber. Well, I hope you're right. But then. Just remember one thing. You can always depend on Barney Fuller to help a friend. Well, if I ever find a friend of Barney Fuller's, I'll tell him. Adam? Holding up those pilings, they should have been out of here long ago. Well, there's a cracked block in the rigging. Hoss is working on it. Oh, fine. That's all I need. We better get down to the press and pass by those railroad men. You tell them that every log they need will be down to that site tomorrow at dawn if it takes every available man and team of the country. Oh. Well, what's going on here? A Sunday school picnic? Now, why isn't that block fixed? Well, there ain't no way to fix it. It's got to be replaced. I got another one on the way. On the way from where? We got plenty of those in the storeroom. No, we ain't, Paul. They ain't done Gabe! All right, Gabe, horse tells me we have no more double blocks. How's that? I plumb forgot to stock them. Oh, did you? Yeah, but I sent a man into town for some, and they should be here in about an hour. About an hour? And how long have you been fooling around with that? About an hour. That makes two hours lost. All right, I want you to listen to me. I want all these logs on the logging road and on their way by nightfall. I don't want any excuses. I just want them at the trestle by morning. Paul, that, that block ain't safe. It, it might come apart any time. It might, and it might not. We'll never know until we try and find out. We're going to try. Now, you listen to me. I heard Barney Fuller tell me that I'm in trouble. And I just heard you tell me why I'm in trouble. But it appears to me the only trouble that I'm in is trying to make you understand that I made a promise to the railroad and I intend for us all to live up to it. Now, is that clear? Fair enough, Paul. Come on, fellas. Hey, that air sure smells good, don't it? Why don't you get the scent of that pine in your lungs? You know, it's just like a tonic. Now, Gabe, I got a hundred things on my mind. Leave me be. Oh, Jose, uh, I got something for you. I plum forgot it. It's a little horse. Joey whittled it for you. Of course, I helped him some, but I don't want you to tell him about that when you see him. He wanted you to have it. All right, you sir. Say thank you to Jody for me. Yes, I will, Mr. Cartwright. Boss, that block just ain't gonna hold. Just get it rigged up. Get that team hooked up over there, Pete. Yeah, I'll do that. Keep out mum of that block. All right, now snap to it. Come on, now, what's holding everything up here? Charlie, get out mum of the block. Bunch of Sunday school we kids. We gotta be careful with that guy drawn. What? We gotta be careful of that block. Well, we'll be careful over here. I'll guide it. Now get those horses moving. Come on. Get those horses moving. <laughs> Let's go. Gabe, bring me a cant hook. Coming right up, Bill. Come on, get that moving. Up we go. All right, then. Now swing around. Here you go, Bill. Swing it. Game. 
Has Gabe. Has Has Gabe. You're dead, Paul. painful, Ben? No, just a little stiff. Well, that'll clear up as soon as the leg has some use. And there'd hardly be any scarring as soon as those lacerations heal. Now, Ben, you're gonna heal a lot quicker without the use of that cane. Hi, boys. Doc, how's Paul? That's so good, I'm afraid. He needs more help than I can give him. Well, it's not a complications with the leg. No, no, I don't think he'd even have a scar. Well, what is it then, Doc? Well, the scar that worries me is in here. Your father's not over the shock of old Gabe's death. He feels responsible. He broods on it. Yeah, we've noticed that. Anything we can do? Get him back to work as soon as possible. Get his mind off of that accident. Well, we need him back on the job, that's for sure. Good, that's what he needs. I'll see you, boys. Adios. Come on, Doc. Well, we just talked to the doc. He said you're fit as a fiddle. Let's say we get started, huh? Joseph, will you uh, bring me the cash box, please? Yes, sir. Here are the uh, latest figures on the cutting. We finished up on the ridge, and uh, we can start on the hogback if it's all right with you. I'll do what you think best, Al. Deliver this to Gabe's daughter, Mrs. Fletcher. I'd like it done today. Yes, sir. Boy, don't, don't you think we ought to get started back to work? Got a lot to do on that trestle. Look, Pop, you can't go on blaming yourself forever. It was an accident. He's right. You can't go on faulting yourself just for trying hard. When a man tries so hard that he risks the lives of other people, he... from now on, the Ponderosa belongs to the three of you. See fit. Oh. 
Well, I thought I told you two to stay out on the hog back and... All right, what's wrong? Plenty. No teams. All right, where are they? Watch Wrangler said he got word from town to pull out. And you let him go? Well, how was I supposed to stop him, Adam, with a gun? No, I just want you two to hold up your end of the job like I'm holding up mine. Look, Adam, if you're the real walking boss around here like you're supposed to be, you'd have known about those teams before we did. Oh, would you like to take over? No, I wouldn't. Dad Bennett, I wish our poet would come back and do his job so we could do our own. All right, let's ride into town and find out what this is all about. Business always comes first with me, Adam. And when a man is offered a sizable boost in his rates, he can't let friendship stand in his way. Well, now, let's just forget about friendship. You made an agreement with my father to furnish the teams for this job. That's correct. The gentleman's agreement. With your father, not with his sons. You had no right pulling out without giving proper notice. Oh, I tried, Adam. I tried. I would have rode out to see Ben myself if, if I didn't have this misery in my back. But I sent word for him to come and see me and, and talk about a, a renegotiation of our little agreement. But your old man didn't even have the gumption to answer back, so what? What? We want them horses. Oh, I'd be happy to oblige, horse, if I could, but that Belgium Holland stock is hard to come by, and every one of my horses has spoke for elsewhere. Where? Well, they've gone to Barney Fuller. Cartwright boys. I'd like to buy you all a drink. You know my ramrod, Jesse Wade. A couple of my hands, Tom, Jake, Chris. We want those teams back, Fuller. You know, I've been meaning to come out to see your father. Most unfortunate thing, men getting hurt, delivery schedules all fouled up. <laughs> well, accidents will happen, I guess. Pull up a chair. Sit down. Now, uh, what was this about some teams? Fuller, I want the teams back at the Bondarosa by tomorrow morning. Or you'll do what, young fella? Send a sheriff and his posse out after him? <laughs> I've got legal right to them teams. I'm not interested in your rights. I'm more interested in your reason. Tomorrow I start to log from my own stand for the Humboldt Canyon Trestle. Whose decision was that? The railroads or your own, Mr. Fuller? I told your pa that if the railroad got in trouble and the Cartwrights started to drag their feet, they could call on me. And it looks like the Cartwrights are starting to drag their feet. My father made an agreement to deliver Ponderosa lumber to that trestle. Now, you're not using those teams, so uh, what are your terms for releasing them? There are no terms. And I only talk to the head man. Well, now you're talking to us. He's through talking to you. You boys go ball to your big, powerful daddy. Maybe he's got better ways than you have of begging Mr. Fuller to get him off the hook. A show you put on. And that's all it was. Just a show. You'll find out that it takes more than a fist fight to get along in the business your father and I are in. And when you get home, tell your father the next time he wants to talk to Mr. Fuller, not to send a boy to do a man's job. Adam. The doc tells me your dad's leg is all healed up. Why did he send you instead of coming himself? It's none of your business.
Ronnie's up to his old tricks, huh? Well, you're gonna have to watch out for him. He's always in there trying. Well, what do you want us to do about Fuller? Do whatever you want. You don't care, is that it? Joe, I think I've cared too much all my life about the wrong things. Couldn't see the forest for the trees. Well, maybe it's not too late to change. Paul, it's, it's, it's such a waste. You're right in the prime of life. And just to throw it away? Not throwing it away. Just want to change my life before it's too late. This ranch was always planned for you three anyways. Good time for you to take over. Paul, that ain't what I meant. What did you mean? Paul, what horse meant is it... is that we need you with us, Pa. Well, I think you have to start seeing things my way. Well, we can't see it your way because this isn't your way. It's puttering around a lot of small talk. That's Gabe's way. Leave him out of this. For Ben Cartwright. He's come for you, Mr. Cartwright. Send it back. Did she say why? No. She didn't have to. Hey, well, buddy, what you got here? This is Fort Fletcher. New cavalry outpost for the protection of the settlers. Yeah? Well, I reckon we can use another fort around here, Joey. Hey, mister, you know my name. What's yours? Horse. Horse Cartwright. Is your mom home? She's inside. Ma! Ma! What is it, Joey? Oh. Ma'am, I'd like to talk to you a minute if I could. Uh, run along, Joey. Sure, Mom. Well, what did you want to say, Mr. Cartwright? Well, ma'am, it's... It's about our Paul. Well, he's been blaming himself for, for, get, for your father's death. Well, he mustn't do that. It was an accident. Our Paul don't believe it. Well, you sort of hoping maybe if, if you'd come out and talk to him, you being Gabe's daughter and all, that maybe he'd, well, maybe it'd be more important that way and be of more help. Well, I'll think about it, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, ma'am. Anything you can do, we'll appreciate it. Thank you, little buddy. Did your pa get the horse I carved for him? He sure did. You tell your pa if he likes it, I'll make him another one so he'll have a match pair. Fine. I'll tell him. Thank you, little buddy. Find this in Woodset, Mr. Cartwright. For you. For for making pretty things. Not good you sit here all the time. You ready to eat, Mr. Cartwright? Thank you. When you're hungry, you just holler.
Didn't mean to get you out of bed, Ben. Mind if I come in? Hmm? How do you feel, Ben? Oh, I feel pretty good, Barney. Sit down. You know, Ben, I've been worried about you. Huh? I mean it. We've had a few battles throughout the years, but there's never been anything personal. You know that. Yeah, I know. Your boys were in town to see me yesterday. Suppose you know? Yeah. Did they tell you what I told them? Yeah, they told me. What I especially told them was to tell you not to send boys to do a man's job. Now, Barney, don't go underestimating those boys. They're better than I ever was. Is that so? Yeah. Sorry I can't say the same about you. I didn't think you'd pull that kind of trick. I cut my cloth to fit the size of the people I'm up against. You're making a mistake, Barney. Is that so? That is, unless you've been giving them the benefit of your advice. No. They're handling things their own way. Why? Big Ben Cartwright getting tired? Abdicating? I find that hard to believe even on your say-so. Well, I don't care what you believe. And I ain't jumping when you throw that hickory club of yours into my wheel. So I'm beginning to see. That sort of clears things up for me. You know, Ben, I've always admired this house. Maybe someday I'll see my way clear to buy it. You know, I have no respect for a man that don't measure up. I can't afford to waste my time on him. If he just stands there, I walk right over him. The Ben Cartwright I know wouldn't hold still for that. But you don't act like him. It takes all the fun out of this business when you got nobody to stand up to you. Go back to bed, Ben. horses. Taking them up to the camp. What for? Hauling logs. Oh, Joe, the, the saddle horses, you know better than... Yeah, Pa, I know better. But when you haven't got anything else, you make do with what you've got. Watch had never been allowed to get away with taking our teams. Watch got away with that because... Because? Look, Pa, you made it quite clear you're not interested whether that trestle gets finished or not. You're not interested in that or in anything else. All right, fine. It took us a little while to get used to that, but now we are, and we're going to take care of everything by ourselves. We'll give you plenty of time to do whatever it is you want to do. Now, we don't ask any questions of you, Pa. I think it'd be just fair if you didn't ask any questions of us. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Cartwright? I was just passing, and... Well, I'm, I'm so glad. Uh, please come in. I'll have Hop Singh make us some tea. Oh, well, no, thank you. I can't stay long. I well, left Jody with a neighbor. Well, please sit down.
I wasn't just passing, Mr. Cartwright. I came to see you deliberately. Do you know why? Well, I... I hope it's because you've changed your mind about the money. No, I haven't changed my mind about that. I, I hadn't meant to offend you by it. If I did, I'm sorry that I can say. Oh, I wasn't offended. Well, why did you send it back? We don't need that kind of help. Well, then, how will you and your boy get along? Our livelihood did not depend on my father. I have a small business as a dressmaker in Virginia City. You knew that. Oh, yes, yes, I, I did know that. You sent me that money to ease your conscience, didn't you? I take full blame for what happened, Mrs. Fletcher. No, you mustn't do that. It was an accident. No, no. It wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been pushing so hard. Your father tried to tell me. I wouldn't listen. You're a builder, Mr. Cartwright, a doer. Well, my father, he was a dreamer. You built the Ponderosa. He built castles in sand. Miss Fletcher, it isn't making it any easier for you to try to find excuses for me. Men die at their work every day, even on their own land, like my husband. No one's to blame. The fact still remains. I'm responsible for your father's death. Not any more than I am. I was the one that made him work there. Does that make me responsible? My husband died breaking a horse to support me and my child. Are we guilty of his death? We can't weep forever for our dead, Mr. Cartwright, or for our mistakes. We have to continue to live. Me for Jody. And you. For your sons. You have to hook them up in threes before they can do any real hauling. I'm not sure if they can do it even then. They have no choice. All right, take them up the logging road. Quit. Hey. I mean, you can't quit, not after we brought the extra teams up here. Well, I guess this is another one of Barney Fuller's little tricks. Well, I've tried Dogan with him, Adam. You have a go at it. You know, there's a kind of an unwritten law in the logging business. Nobody quits in the middle of cutting season without good cause. Now, what's the reason, Mike? It's a matter of conditions. What conditions? Your pa was bull of the woods in this camp when we first came in. Now it looks like he's not going to come back. And likely won't need us again after the cutting's finished. If it is. Maybe there's something I didn't think was necessary to tell you. I'm bull of the woods here. And it really doesn't matter whether my father comes back or not. Whatever you think his job was, it's mine now. Are any of you man enough to prove me wrong? Any one of you. No, no. This is going to be interesting, Joe. Let's sit down and watch it. Answer your question, man. All of you are working here, you can go right on working. If you want to quit, you can quit. But whether you quit or whether you continue to work, I just want you to know that the Ponderosa will continue to operate, no 
matter who tries to stop it. Okay, fellas, let's go back to work. Be safe, huh? Yeah. What's the next move, Adam? Get the teams back. Oh, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you mind if I uh, did that alone? I sent word to you, Ben. I sent word to you. I would have come up myself, but I had this ache in my back, you see, and I couldn't make it. Oh, come on, Ben. Cut. Right. You can push me around, because I told you I sent word for you to come and see me about this. Well, I'm here so we can get them teams right now. But I can't get them together. Well, we'll get as many as we can, and we'll get the rest later. But, Ben! Now, listen to me, you. What you did was no better than horse stealing. Horse stealing? Horse stealing. But they're my own animals. Well, I'm wrecking them. Get them. Well, Ben, what are you doing out of bed and without a cane? Well, why don't you come down from under that geranium pot? I'll tell you. No, I don't want to see you standing out here. Come on inside. Sit down. You come down here. Here's what I want to tell you, Barney. We still got that trestle contract. We're going to pay whatever penalty we have to for the delay I caused. But just remember this. It's going to be a Ponderosa trestle. And if these uh, timber wolves of yours get in the way, well, we'll just have to cut them down the way we cut down our trees. Put that away, Jesse. You know, I guess I figured wrong. I was plumb sure you'd lost your guts. What happened? Somebody taught me an angle. What angle? That a man can't really go against his true nature. It's a pretty good angle. Yeah. I learned it from a friend. Ah! Oh! Oh! Yeah, Ben. All I can dig up for the present. Step aside, boy. I said, step aside, boy. Thank you, what? Yeah. Yeah. Welcome home, Ben. Well, there it is. Most beautiful trestle in the world. And there was a day when I thought we'd never see it. There was a time when I didn't care if I ever did or not. We knew better than that, Pop. Hey, Paul, what about that little rest you promised us? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, that depends. Yeah, on what? On the bull of the woods. Moo. Bull said, yeah, Paul. <laughs> 